Reverend Derek O. Jenkins Sr. And our location of our church is 1715 East Market Street, New Albany, Indiana. This day, this day, we welcome all to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In addition to those that are here this morning, but in addition to you all that are at home this day. Yeah, so we asked yeah. if it's members that are, if you're at home and you uh, sing along with us, the hymnal this morning is, I have decided to follow Jesus. Hymnal yeah. 164, I have decided to follow Jesus. Yes, yes. Hymnal yeah. 164, and we'll be doing all three verses. I believe it's three verses. Yeah, we'll yeah. be doing all three verses. And we ask if you all would sing with us. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to Amen. I come this morning to, we always talk about Jesus, and you know he does good work. And I was reading in Acts chapter 3, I'll be reading out of 6 through 9, some of the miracles that God has done. You know, a lot of us don't believe things unless we see things. Amen. Amen. But this book of God, I'll tell you some of the miracles some of the miracles that he does he should make a shout yeah yeah and praise him a little harder and read much more about him so i'm reading acts chapter 3 verses 6 through 9 when you have it when you stand because this is god's word amen amen and it says then peter said silver and gold have i none that's right but such as I have given I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lift him up, and immediately his feet and ankles bone received strength. Mm -hmm. And leaping up, and he leaped up and stood and walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Yeah. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. I just read to y'all, Acts chapter three, verses six through nine, may the Lord add a blessing and a reading and a hearing and do it with his word. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Someone said amazing grace. Yes, yes, yes. How sweet, how sweet the sound. Mm. Amazing grace, yes. how sweet the sound that 
saved a wretch, wretch like, like me. me. Yes. I once was lost. Come on. But now I'm found. Yes, yes, was yes. blind, but now we see. Yes. May we bow for a, for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we, a few of your children who have once again assembled ourselves through the grace of God that has yes, allowed yes, us to, yes, yes. to be mobile, mm. to have a reasonable portion of health and strength. Yes, Lord Jesus. Unto our God who has been better to us than <laughs> we've been to ourselves. Well, well. Heavenly Father, we thank you for permitting us to be able to look upon this another day. Yes, yes. A yes. day that we've never seen before. Oh, thank you, Lord. Father, thank we you. pray and ask that throughout this day that you would allow your spirit to, to cover us. Yes, Lord Jesus. That no hurt, harm, or danger may come unto any of us. Mm, mm. Then, Heavenly Father, as we are bowed here this morning, we pray and ask in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that the various petitions mm. of those who sit here in this sanctuary yes, Lord Jesus. and those who stand in this sanctuary all right, all right. and those who sit and stand in the various homes, in the various venues, we pray and ask in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that yes, you Lord. would hear their various requests unto you. Mm. Father, as we hear, we thank you for how your hand has reached down and touched us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Touched our hearts. Mm. You've touched our bodies. You've touched our eyes. You've touched us with a spirit of love. Yes, yes, yes. And Heavenly Father, we pray and ask that your spirit would dwell with us throughout this day. Mm. That as men and women look upon us, that they not see us, but they see you. Yes, yes, yes. Then, Heavenly Father, as we bow here, we, we have come to the realization. We have come to know that our days are not going to be forever. All right, all right. On come this on. side. Pray, brother, pray. Father, we pray and ask. Yes. Father, we do pray and ask with all sincerity. And we know because you said that you would be with us even to the end. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But Father, we come asking in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. That in our, that in our dying hour, well, that thou would be there. We start receive our spirit that we would receive rest in you. Father, this day, mm. we ask this prayer and these various petitions. Yes, Lord Jesus. In the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. And we all said, amen. Amen.
watered this plant yes. here. All God right. has truly blessed this little this little plant on yes, this yes. corner of market and golf. All right, all right. Isaiah, I believe it's Isaiah, the 59th chapter, verse 1. And it says, The hands of the Lord have not been sharpened. All right. Nor his ear, that his ear cannot hear us. And Come on. God's hand has been upon us. All right, all right. And he has touched this little plant. Yes, yes, yes. And watered this little plant. So we have reason to blot out the world and to set our eyes and mine on a God. Yes, yes. Who yes. has truly been good. Oh, yes. Oh, and yes. And kind to us. Yes, Lord Jesus. So I ask and I request that you blot out the world. Come on, come on. And put our minds on our Lord and Savior, Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, yes. And allow the word of God to be fed to you. Yes. That when we would leave this place. Yes, Lord That Jesus. when we would leave this place. All right, all right. Men and women would look upon us and give themselves as we gave ourselves to God. Yes. We thank you. Amen. To God be the glory. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Is anybody glad to be here this morning? We take for granted that this is the day that the Lord has made. What has transferred from one week to the next, only we can give our grace, only by the grace of God in his mercy that we gather here today. So I wonder, did anyone to come magnify the Lord with me today? Oh, come on, be, come on, let's give him some praise for all the things that he has done, all the wonderful things that he has done. When you look back over all the things that you went through, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where will we be? He's a good God. He's an awesome God. He's a blessing God. He's a delivering God. He's a providing God. He's a way making God. He's a door opening God. He's a God beyond our faith. He can do anything but fail. Oh, does anybody know the same God that I know? When I think about all the things that I've went through, oh, I give God all the praise and all the glory. If you only knew what someone is going through next to you, you would give them some praise right now, you wouldn't be here if it had not been for the Lord on your side. He woke you up this morning and started you on your way. Let us give him some praise for he is a mighty good God. He's a good God and he's worthy to be praised. Good morning, Howard Chapel. Morning. Last week we celebrated Howard Chapel birthday in a magnificent way. Give your hand, give yourself a hand praise for the way that we celebrated last week. What a great time we had in worship, in fellowship, spiritually and physically. And I just want to give a hand praise to the culinary committee for what an awesome meal that they prepared for us. I looked over there and I've just seen so many different cakes and pies. I felt like I was at Charlie Com Factory or something. I was like, Lord, have mercy. But thank you for everyone who took part in there. Thanks, Sister Rose, Sister White, for the chairperson for that committee. We just thank each of you for 134 years and we just want to do our part. God and God is blessing us in a mighty way. This morning's scripture comes to us from Ecclesiastics chapter 9. Ecclesiastics chapter 9, verse number 11. Verse number 11. Ecclesiastics chapter 9, verse number 11. If you found it, please stand for the reading of God's holy and righteous word. I'll be reading from the King James Version. Ecclesiastics chapter 9, verse 11. 
Here are the words of our Lord. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor to the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to man of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. May God have a blessing upon his reading and holy word. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Once again, O oh Lord, we come calling upon thy holy and righteous name. We come, O oh Father God, because you have looked beyond our faults. And bright early this morning, you are woken us up to brand new mercies. Realizing we've all sinned and fallen short, but your grace and your mercy allowed us to roll on a little while longer. That when we woke up, Lord, we had just a portion of health and strength, but our mind was made up on Jesus. That we entered into our vehicles and you gave us traveling grace to this place. Now we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We come to say thank you for all the many blessings you have stolen upon us. Lord, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. Lord, we just trusting in you. Because you said greater is he that is in me than of the world. We come this morning, Father God, looking to the hills from which cometh our help. Knowing that our help comes from the Lord. Lord, we send a special prayer for Minister Gillespie. Lord, lock your loving arms around you. Lord, we see the progress, but Lord, we know each and every day you're going to give him the strength that he stands in need of. Lord, touch his wife by his side and his family. Lord, we pray for Brother Lacey, your oh Father God, this morning. Sister Lacey and Ricky, bless them. Lock your loving arms around them. Lord, send a special prayer for Sister Gail Bryant. Lord, last week she entered and ordered her steps to come and restore her membership, and then she got some news. But Father God, I come to let her know, hold on to God's unchanging hand. That God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can even ask. And what you're going through, he wouldn't bring it to you if he wasn't going to bring you through it. Hold on just a little while longer. I know what he can do. We've seen what he can do. We serve a God that is able. Lord, we pray for Carla McPhetus. You know what they're standing in the need of. The family needs you, Father God. And they can't make it without you. Touch her, oh Father God, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Let her know you're a God that never leave her nor forsake her. Lord, I send a special prayer for Sister Pam Campbell, Sister Ruth Jones, Brother Curtis, 
We thank you, God, for Sister Joan Collier being in the house of God. We see your blessings, God. We see your healing. We see your miracles, God. You just keep on blessing us. Every time we look around, somebody's coming through the door saying there's nobody but the Lord. We thank you this morning, oh God. We pray for Sister Sylvia, oh Father God, you continue to strengthen her. Sister Georgia Powell, pray for Sister Eva Hearns. Maddie Hunter, Mary Slaughter. We pray for all these families, oh Father God, all of our seniors. Lord, you've been so good to us. We know we've come this far by faith, but Lord, you've ordered our steps. Lord, we pray and continue for Brother Tyrone Gunn's family, Lord, that you just continue to touch them. Let them know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Lord, we just pray for each and every one that's here this morning, that we come to worship you. We come to give you honor. We come to give you praise. And we come to magnify your holy and righteous name. Realizing, Lord, that it's just something happens when we call on your name, oh, Father God. That when we call on your name, situations don't seem so bad. When we call on your name, tribulations don't last. When we call on your name, sickness got to leave. When we call on your name, demons got to flee. When we call on your name, Heavenly Father God, we call on your name. Something is about to happen. So we call on your name because you're the wonderful counselor. We call on your name because you're the mighty God. We call on your name because you're a bridge over troubled water. We call over your name because you're lily in the valley. We call over your name because, Father God, you can do all things. We call on your name because there's no other name under the sun like the name Jesus. Every time I say Jesus, something begins to happen. Jesus in the morning and Jesus in the evening and Jesus late at night. It's just something about that name Jesus that we're going to keep on calling it. We thank you. Lord, we pray for the man that's come come with the word this morning, oh, Father God. Touch him in a mighty way. Give us a word, oh, Father God, that we will run out and tell the world we serve a true and a living God. Father God, be with this service. And when we leave from this place, let us never leave your presence. This is our servant's prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. We have now our responsive reading. It's coming to for the back of your hymn books. 571, or it will be on the screen as well. The model prayer. I'll read the first. You read the second, we'll read the last together. Please stand for the reading of God's word. Here is our words. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, (laughs) as John also taught his disciples. But thou, when thou pray, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which sees in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knows what things you have need of before you ask them. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if we forgive men of their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you altogether. But if you forgive not men of their trespasses, neither will the Father forgive you of trespasses. Amen. The model prayer. There's something about prayer that changes things. There, there's something about prayer. And on this morning, we are going to do something we haven't done before COVID. I'm going to ask this. We, we're going to have altar prayer. I just believe that um, it's time for us to get back to our help. Prayer is our strength. Pr prayer brings us together. So as we come to the altar, as we have done before, if you feel comfortable, come down and let us go to the throne of grace together. As a church body under one accord, we, we, it's been a while. But Dr. McKinley always says something happens when the church prays together. And I think it's time we get back to the way we was. Because he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we're going to lift up names of those who are standing in the need of prayer. There's power in prayer. Some of us are here right now because somebody prayed for us before we could even pray for ourselves. So now as we join hands, if you have a name of someone you want us to pray for, say that name at this time. this time, Brother Russell Burchett is going to take us to the throne of grace. in the midst. 
Father God, for these areas where there's two or three are gathered in your name, touching and agreeing, you shall be in the midst, Father God. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask right now that you just continue to heal as only you can, Father God. Continue to deliver as only you can, Father God. Dear Heavenly Father, for without you, we are nothing, Father God. Yes, come on, son. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask right now that you, a special blessing upon my family, Father God. Continue to hold us, continue to mold us, Father God, in the way that you would have us to go. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless the man who you sent to speak a word today, Father God. Dear Heavenly Father, speak through him to us, dear Heavenly Father, that we may learn and that we may know and that we may grow, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, you're just so good, so wonderful, dear Heavenly Father. I just can't thank you enough if I had 10,000 tongues, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, right now I just ask a special blessing upon my, my family, dear Heavenly Father. My children, dear Heavenly Father, the woman you put beside me, Father God. Dear Heavenly Father, just continue to strengthen us. Just continue to strengthen us, Father God, and we will continue to hold on to your unchanging hand, Father God. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Father God. All these blessings I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's give God a hand praise. Let's give God a hand praise for this day. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank Brother Russell for taking us to the throne of grace. God bless you. Let's give him a hand. Praise his first hand. Amen. I know many of you know I want to thank you for the text and the phone calls. I was uh, admitted in the hospital late, earlier this week, and by recommendations, I will not be speaking this morning, but we do have a preacher in the house do have a preacher in the house, and it is none other than my nephew. He's no stranger to Howard Chapel. Evangelist Brian Jackson is going to come forth with a word after we hear a song from the musicians at this time. But just, I want to just thank you for all your prayers and all of your calls. God is moving, you know. It, 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 may, it may be dark in a moment, but God will bring some sunshine if you just hold on to the morning time. So... I thank God for each of you and all of your blessings and all of your prayers. And it just seemed like whenever you get to doing good, the devil will always try to attack. But then my preacher told me, he said, that just means you're on the right track. So we're going to keep on going and see what God has for us. So after the next selection, you will hear from the choir. You will hear from Evangelist Brian Jackson. Amen. 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 Everybody knows this song, so I'm going to ask you to sing it with me. I 
just want to praise you forever.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. stay in place for me. On today, um, I, I am very a private person with my emotions. And this morning I woke up kind of weak emotionally. I'm trying to keep my cool together. Um, 14 years ago, um, I remember like it was yesterday. In the month of September, God allowed my uncles to go get my grandfather from North Carolina, never knowing that God had a certain plan. Mm. I remember we was at St. John at that time, and we got out so early because the power went out and the weather was so bad. And we got a call that a tree fell on the back deck in the house and my uncle was remodeling, known as the big house, the 39th Street house, the house that had been passed down to generation to generation. Yeah. Never knowing that God allowed this blackout happening in the southern regions of Indiana and Louisville, that allow not just the media family, but the whole family to come together in one house. Mm. God allows something that we thought was tragic to allow it to be in his plan. Well. We didn't have any electricity. And around that time of 2008, it wasn't no iPhone 14, nothing mm. like that. Well. It was an iPhone, but it wasn't so updated as today. Um, some of his kids are here, but some of them were very small at that time. I'm uh, some years older than them, but I can remember uh, we didn't have any power, so we did what was necessary to eat. So we used the grill. We used things that a lot of times that we toss away. Mm. Some things that was brought up in our tradition of homes can be reused. Um, I don't want to say use the mentality that you expect evil things is always going to happen, but it's nothing wrong about using the things that was brought up in your home as a child. And uh, my grandmother, who's sitting in the congregation today, didn't know that God was speaking to all of us through her. 
She kept saying to us that it was like a wake because everyone was in the household that generation to generation was birthed in. Not knowing that following Sunday that, have you ever looked at a person but you felt like they wasn't there? It was like a guardian angel. Mm. I can remember my uncle, uh, Thomas Leroy Jenkins Singer, uh, was in the back of St. John on the right side with his daughter, Jamaica. And I seen him, but I remember just yesterday I was sitting in the choir and he just looked, looked, and looked, and he looked, and he just like he just disappeared. And I remember on Thursday night, September the 25th, at around 10 p.m., my uncle, um, his name is Adrian Jenkins, knocked on the door three times. Uh, walking in circles, I'd never seen my uncle cry in my life. And um, I remember my mother walked out and they shut the door. Then I get a call from Alabama. My grandfather lost a brother, not knowing that after I came to myself, um, I wake up seeing my father cry. I'd never seen my father cry but two times in my life. Um, and not knowing that my uncle, who was remodeling the house and, and did a lot for others, had passed away in a tragic accident. And here we are 14 years later. And I just thought about it that sometimes God will take us through things to season us up. Come on now. And through the storm of that blackout, he allow us to come together. It may have been briefly, but it was just a time that was needed. And Ecclesiastes it says that the time and place for everything. So, um, I am encouraged <laughs> to walk with Jesus. Yes, I am. Uh, but just something to make me feel better. I'm going to try to key at a flat. I have not, I don't sing as often like I used to. I do more preaching now. But however, when I started preaching, uh, some received me and some declined me, but I knew what was on my life. And me and ask, once you know who you are in God, you automatically get delivered from people. And once you get delivered from people, that's when you're able to have peace with yourself and with God. In times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grip the solid, solid rock, that rock is Jesus, he is the one, be very sure. Be very sure your anchor holds and grip the solid, solid rock. I need the old, I need the
need you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Church here at the hospital, right? Jesus wept so I can cry. <laughs> Amen. I want to bring it to your hearing on today. Thank God for my uncle, your pastor, to his fiance, to my grandmother, to my mother, to my little cousins, to everyone, and to the musicians. Sometimes we leave the musicians out. And if we take the women and the magicians out, Lord, help the church. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, ushers. I want to ask you to turn to your books, um, your weapons to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9. And it was just confirmation when I was hearing my uncle pray what to speak on. Um, so I'm, we're going we're gonna to do a little bit reading today. I know often sometimes when you go visit churches and you get invited, often you hear, look at your neighbor. And I'm not a tell your neighbor preacher. And Bishop Moore used to say all the time that if it takes all that, that's you. But it don't take for all that for me. Uh, one mother said to me one time at church, when God get done speaking through you, that's when you sit down. So I'm not going to be long, but I do have a word from you today from our Heavenly Father. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 9. For those who are all able to stand, please do so. If you can't, we understand. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. I like unity. Um, and in seminary, they tell us to acknowledge what version of the Bible that we're reading from. And on Sunday mornings, and usually in the black church, we have King James Version. But normally do Bible study, you have NIV. But on today, we will be coming from the King James Version. And we can read that um, chapter 9 of Ecclesiastes, verse 11 together. For those who have it, say, man, if you don't, say, wait. Amen. Let's read that together. I'll return. You may be seated on today. Um, just as a footnote, um, I will be coming from that scripture, but I'll be coming through some other places. Amen? So you may say Brian Preacher had a lot of scriptures, but this is the main source of the ingredients. I want to use a message topic on today. Lord, help me what I can't change. Lord, help me what I can't change. Let's say that together. Lord, Lord help, me help me what I can't change. I can't change. Lord, help me what I can't change. In um, the 1960s, you had um, the civil rights movement that took its spark, especially in 1954 and 55. The Brown versus Board of Education and the summer of 1955 with Emmett Till being murdered. Then December the 1st of Rosa Parks refusing to get up out of her seat because of racial discrimination and what birthed the Montgomery bus protests, the march. And in the 1960s also you had um, a lot of leaders that people had a lot of hope in 
pass away. Such as the President of the United States was killed on national television, John F. Kennedy. Then, of 1963, you have Mega Evers was killed in his driveway. Mm -hmm. And Malcolm X of 1965. Then, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King in Memphis, Tennessee of 1968. And in the midst of all that, wars were still taking place. But especially when Dr. King was assassinated, it seemed like the world forgot about his message. But some people were saying, why tear up the city? Why cuss? Why get a joint? Why start cussing? Why start a doing all these things that you wasn't really doing when he was alive. But then I realized something when I began to get my activist voice, that sometimes uh, you don't hear us until we start making any noise. So many people are living in the spirit of frustration and the spirit of anxiety, battling with the lack of patience because of what is happening in today's society. It was a time period that people had much conviction and respect for leadership in the church. Leadership overall. But nowadays people are coming to the grocery stores, trouble-minded, ending people's lives because of a lot of love in their heart. Walking in, in churches, sitting there for many services, and can come back to Mother Emanuel in Charleston, Carolina, and sit there and kill innocent people without any conviction. Mm -hmm. Walking in into public school systems, walking into public schools, killing young babies, and never actually experiencing life. We are living in the last days. I don't know many times we have heard that Jesus is soon to come. Yes. Now then look in high guy. Now it says, look, look in high guy. It said, look among you that saw this house in the first glory. And how do you see it now? There was a time period when you be able to recognize who was saint, who was a Christian, who was a believer in God. Now you can't tell who is seasoned, young, middle age. Because everybody trying to fit in. But in the word of God it says come out among you to be separated. Now even in the military they have a certain uniform. Now when people come to church now it's like I don't believe it. Take all that. Now you should be modest now but you should have respect for yourself, for God's people. But most of all for where you come from. But most of all we have forgot where we come from. And if you forget where you come from, you don't know where you're going. And if you are so judgmental and, and having so much hate in your heart, you will never win a soul to Christ. The Bible says whoever wins souls is wise. Now there's a difference between reality versus the spirit of knowing that God spoke to you. Now, even though God may have revealed things to you, does not mean it's good to go home and just go ahead and do it. Sometimes there's a time and season and place for everything. You cannot change what already took place. So meaning as if you don't find yourself getting therapy with God, you'll find yourself operating the spirit of anger. Everybody shout anger. Now, what you mean, anger? I'm not always talking about cussing and doing all these things, but you have uh, road rage. Every time someone cuts you off verbally in the car, on FaceTime, on social media, you soon to pop. <laughs> and if you're not careful, the devil will use that to embarrass you. As a mental health counselor, I see so much of torment that people battle with. And it's a reason because they do not know how to surrender. People don't know how to confess when they're wrong. Confess they make mistakes. 
confess that they still allowing that to eat them up. We struggle with acknowledging the fact what took place the more than moving on. Now, if you battle with unforgiveness, that is poison. What you mean, preacher? Soon as if a person has done something familiar what you were upset about, and you said that, well, I'm going to forgive, but I will never forget. Now, you will never forget if somebody raped you. You will never forget that. You will never forget the verbal abuse that you face. But let me tell you something. Your emotions, your response should be different. If you say that you are trying to heal, if you say that you are work in progress, but how many years, decades, you going to be in diapers with your emotions? Come on now. How many times you going to go around this circle in life? Now look at David. Everybody shout David. David. He had so much chaos going on. He had uh, the repenting heart, but how many times are you going to repent? Now there is such a thing called learned behavior. Everybody shout learned behavior. Learning behavior. Then there, there's such a thing called being proud. Everybody shout prideful. Uh huh. When we operated in a mentality in the spirit of that, I know it everything. You always got an answer. Are you operating in the spirit of what if? You should never operate in the spirit of what if or what wish I could have when you had every opportunity. But David said that I had to get to a place of a long time. A long time. Everybody shout a long time. A long time. Uh huh. After he went to God in prayer, he realized that his hope, his help did not come through the people. His kinfolk turned on him, the things that he tried to plant and God to manifest, it seemed like it did not work. Mm. And you said, God, I prayed, I fasted, I've been waiting, I've been praying my tithes and offering. God, when am I going to get blessed? When am I going to receive rest? When am I going to have my breakthrough? When is my turn to experience liberty? Well, David said that I encourage myself in the Lord. Yes. You have to know how to birth confidence. Everybody shout confidence. confidence. You got to know who you are in God. And once you know who you are in God, you will shake the shackles off your feet. You will find yourself not entertaining foolishness. Now, the devil is trying to burn out the saints, burn out the seasoned folk. One problem after another problem, affliction after another affliction in your body. First is your back, now is your shoulders, first is your head, now migraines. You got all this going on, God, when are you going to heal me? But I realized something that some strength only comes by going through. David said that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. You have to go through some things. Now talk about the race. So many people have got vaccinated, the booster, all these things, wear the mask, and still caught COVID. You say you did all the necessary things, but it seemed like you still got sick. You tried to avoid everything. You own your little house on the prairie. You don't come out. You don't fellowship. Are you going to go to church and you're out? And you try to avoid certain things, but how come we stood in this same predicament? I realized that if the world, not the United States, but if the world well, go back and repent to God. I believe God will deliver us from this affliction called COVID-19. We have lost love and respect for one another. Now, think about it. For those who are baby boomers, the silent generation, you can remember when someone walked past your house on the front portion, your mother, your grandmother, and someone will greet at you. Uh-huh, they will smile. How you doing, baby? How you doing? They will greet you. God bless you. Is there anything that I can do for you? Now these houses today don't even have porches. <laughs> now you walk past someone, they mean mug. They don't only speak like they don't hear you. But you should never lose the fellowship for your brothers and sisters. 
You should never lose the love and respect that is in your heart. Even if it's not popular, you must put on a garment of praise. Yes. Even when you feel like that you say, God, I don't feel like it. There must be a press. Everybody shout a press. You have to know how to stand your ground. What you mean, stand your ground? Do not be breakable. The Bible says the devil come to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. He has no good intentions. He already knows what's going on with you. You don't have to go on and on and on and on and on and talking about it. The devil wants you to be trap minded we paralyze our faith by keeping going on and on and on about it. Know how to shut your mouth. All right, man. In a time of season. And if you're not careful, you will say some things that you don't even mean. Hey. So I mean that you got to be careful what you say in your time of season. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let's talk about being a warrior. A warrior in God. What do I mean about a warrior in God? We have a lot of people that are church. Church. We have so many people indoctrinated. This is a custom for many years. But when it's time for change, it's like we jet lag. <laughs> we don't want to accept the change. So one person is on one accord and the other person is struggling with the other person. I don't know about this. If you always doing the same thing, you're going to get the what? The same results. What brought you to church, what convicted you may not convince the younger generation. You can't talk any type of way to order to win people to Christ now. Hey. And the Bible says, love and kindness have I drawn thee. Now, when the walk of summer took place, Malcolm X had a meeting with Coretta Scott King, and he said, Coretta, just because I may not agree with you does not mean I am your enemy. Mm -hmm. We are living in a day of society that so many people are so quick to pick up a God instead of communicating that you have offended me. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says if you have offended your brother and sister, go to them. Stop that generation curse and know how to communicate when there's a problem. What happens in the house stays in the house. But the Bible says a house divided itself cannot what? Stand. We have a lot of people living in houses but not homes. A broken home, a broken generation. The relationship is toxic because no one is communicating. But now we have such thing called social media and technology that we just text. We don't visit no more. We go everywhere else, but we can't visit the sick. We can't call on the leadership. Oh, no. Know how to make some time. Mm -hmm. Discipline. Everybody shout discipline. Yes. This, yeah, this is this type of message today. Meaning as you have to know how to humble yourself. Everybody shout humble. Humble, settle down somewhere. Sit down and let God speak to you. Thank you, Jesus. And when you are about to shift, you got to realize that here come the devil. So me and as you have to be guarded up. The Bible says this comes out by nothing but what? Prayer and what? Fasting. Me and as you can't find yourself dwelling, waiting on everyone else. You must have a personal relationship with God. Now, we have a lot of people who experience water baptism, but still trap-minded. And these teenagers, when they die on the obituary, it said they accepted Christ in the early age. In the circular world, there was a song, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> you can't put everybody in heaven like we think we are. There is a such thing called, yes, you did it. Yes, you messed up. Now what are you going to do from here? Learn it how to change the mindset. Change the gears. If you steady driving in neutral, you ain't going to go nowhere. You keep saying, God, why this, why that? And you keep questioning God, saying, I'm trying to humble you. I'm trying to set you up for greatness. But you got to know how to go through. David said, they don't walk to the valley of the shadow of death. I will what? Fear no evil. 
Get rid of your fear. Well, how can I stop fearing when I got all this turmoil going on in my life? Well, let me tell you something. Learn how to put on a garment of praise. And how you do that, get in worship. But your worship can be hindered if you ain't getting your home straightened out. Your relationship straightened out. Get your relationship straightened out first. Then you'll be able to have liberty in the spirit. You can't even worship God without having the thoughts that come to your mind because you didn't get everything straightened out first. If you put dirty clothes on top of clean clothes, eventually it's going to stink. If you keep hanging around with negativity, it's hard to make a productive life because you're all around negativity. If you find yourself always cheating, using a form of escape behavior, you always find yourself exiting instead of learning how to overcome. You got to know how to overcome. The Bible says you overcome him by the blood of the lamb, by the words of your testimony. Yeah. And in our own church, it took our testimony service because so many people test a lie now. But it was a time period you had testimony service that when the pastor come up, he'd already confirmed what you were battling with. What were you struggling with? How to get your answer. So learning how to testify the goodness of Jesus, but also got to know what to tell. So we always give the devil an account of victory. But what about your mistakes? Your downfalls? Now, and I remember uh, in testimony service, and we have testimony service every service we have in my church on Friday nights and Sunday mornings and Sunday nights. And people would get up and say, give honor to God who's the head of my life. And they would give report and they would end with the same line. Pray my strength in the Lord. Meaning as we have to know how to pray our strength in the Lord. Now we are living in a day of society that people don't know how to handle stress. So now they birth addictions. Now they birth watching pornography, unmarital sex, lying, uh huh, drinking, smoking. You never did it before, but now you under a lot of stress. Now you develop these habits, these addictions. And the devil wanted you to get caught up. Now it's hard to resist because you find yourself lusting out of it. And the people think lust is just sexual. No, it ain't that. When you consistently find yourself having a desperate need for that. And the devil wants you to try mind and believe that this is going to take your pain away as a form of coping skill. Yes. The devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. He has no good intentions. But God, help us to go through our time of season. God, give us the knowledge of understanding. So what do you do when you're at a standstill? When you feel like that you have prayed and you fasted and you feel like you've done your part? What do I do now? What do I say now? God, what is the answer? If you haven't heard anything from God, stay humble. Don't move. Don't find yourself jumping there and jumping there and talking and talking and talking and talking. Now you're giving the devil victory. The devil has no victory over us unless we allow it. Lord, help us what we can't change. Realizing that what we go through sometimes have nothing to do with us. God will use grandmama, God will lose, uh, use um, a deacon, a mother of the church, a mother in Zion to allow them to be a testimony among the church. That gave somebody else encouragement. Oh, she had cancer and she's still coming to church on time, coming to Sunday school. She never lost her determination. She never lost her joy. That make me want to go even further. You may be the only Bible that someone's going to read. Someone always watching you. You may not even realize it. And you have to realize that your character speaks volume. Even if you may not even say nothing. It is going through your mind. You just as wrong. Get rid of the evil thoughts. That come to your mind. People cannot even rest at night because of frustration. They have so much worry and doubt. Questions about what's going to happen next. Learn how to trust God. Well, some people say, well, I have trust issues. 
I have went through so much as a child. I went through so much in relationship, it's hard to trust somebody. Uh-huh. Well, let me tell you this. If you always think because you experience a skunk, so many times you think everyone stinks, you're going to be trap-minded. Everybody don't have the same mentality. Everybody does not operate in the same spirit. And the Bible says, you try the spirit, what? By the spirit. So me and as you have to have the spirit of discernment, and God will speak to you between the clean and unclean. So me and as you have to examine that spirit. Now me and as it may be good for a moment, but doesn't mean it's lifetime. It can be life damaging. Now sometimes you see in churches now you have preachers get caught up. And I know we see that. We see that in leadership and in the economics. We see that in the White House. And God got taught, fooling with them, and giving them person a chance, out the chance, out the chance. Now you get embarrassed. Now you get convicted by the people. God gave you a chance to come clean. But you didn't come clean because of pride of high ego. Or you feel like that you're going to get embarrassed because God is trying to speak to you through the message. But we have distractions. We'll come to church. In, running in and out, talking, distractions. And the Bible says, he that has the ear, let him hear. You want God to speak and give you an escape, you got to have a yes in your heart. And once you have a total yes, that makes the job a lot easier and smooth. Not saying you will never go through anything, but through the help of God, you can overcome. You got to get to a point in your life that you say, God, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. Hey, so me and as you may say, well, God, I really don't know what my hangups are, my struggles are. I really just don't know. God, show me what it is before I won't do it no more. I know from generation to generation, people say you don't supposed to question God. And the Bible says you have not because what? You ask not. Hey. So me and I, you got to get in tune with the Spirit of God. And how you get in tune in the Spirit of God, get around people that got some power over weakness. What you mean power over weakness? Be able to get a prayer through. Now that's so many people say, oh God, why, 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 why? Get out of that sad mode. Put on a garment of prayer that says, God, bless me. Increase my faith. God, help my mind. Help my soul. God, help my family. Oh, Jesus. Me and I, you got to have a hunger for God. Hey, everybody shout a hunger for God. A hunger for God. And once you really have a hunger for God, you'll find yourself saying, I'm not going to get distracted no more. Hey, what do you mean distractions? You can't focus. The devil wants you to get trap-minded. He wants us to give up. Lose your hope. Lose your focus. Lose your smile. Lose your determination. Hey, glory to God. Let's go to John 16. John 16. I'm almost done. John 16, verse 33. John 16. It says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have what? Tribulations. But be of a what? Good cheer. And I have overcome what? The world. He said, You will have what? Tribulations. But if you ever look in the book of John, it says that I will send you a second comforter, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's more than just speaking in tongues. It's more than what you wear. It does not matter how long you've been in the choir. It doesn't matter how long you've been serving the church. Do you have the right spirit? Hit set on that keyboard, mother, for me. Do you have the right spirit? Mean eyes that you can have the tone. You can be in a key A flat. You can have the nice jewelry. But do you have the right spirit? It's a 
anointing that destroys the yoke. The anointing. Everybody shout the anointing. anointing. The anointing what destroys the yoke. You can have all these nice things, but where will you leave here? Where will you go from here? There's another level in God. And after the Holy Ghost came upon them when, I, when they was in the upper room, the Bible says they was on one, one accord. Everybody shot one accord. Meaning that they were unified. You didn't have trouble in the spirit. People wasn't judging. People wasn't criticizing. But they was all on one accord. Everybody shot one accord. One accord. Now, during the civil rights movement, they marched That week, you be able to uplift them. Mm. Meaning that you got to know how to cheer up your brother and your sister. In spite of discrimination, in spite of the racism, in spite of you may not even have the money in your pocket to pay for their dinner, but know how to give encouragement to your brother and sister. God, show me what I can do. God, show me what I can say to be a role model, a mentor to my community. If you ever want to win your family, you got to know how to make time. You got to know how to listen. You got to know how to say, God, show me how to win my family back to you. You know, a lot of times people try to win them to the church, but win them to Christ. You got to live that lifestyle in front of them. And if you're not living in the lifestyle in front of them, that's not going to convince them to come to church. Convince whatever they're doing is wrong. You got to know how to live the godly example. Now, Booker T. Washington said, character is your identity. Character is power. Power over weakness. The devil wants us to be bowed and depressed, but God said, I don't want you to be that way. He said, I will send you a second comforter. Hey, so me and as the Bible says, after the Holy Ghost came upon them, they received power over weakness. Me and as something got a hold of them and allowed them to carry on. So me and as learning how to say, God, help me carry on in these lies and evil days. Get to a point and you say, God, show me what it is. God, I need my joy and peace back. Now, when God give it to you, you got to know how to be glad for Jesus. God do things nice for us, but we keep shouting about it. Hey, and sometimes God tell us to sing a song, read the scripture, send out the text message, and we don't do it. Now here comes somebody else get anointed, and they do it, and you try to pop on. No, don't live in that type of lifestyle. Learn how to trust the process. Yeah. Learn how to go through with God. God, show me how to do it. God, guide me in my footsteps. You know, I see in today's society that we have a lot of hate in this world. But I realize something that everybody's conviction is not the same conviction. Everybody don't have the same upbringing as you. Everybody don't have the same love and kindness in your heart. But you can never lose your confidence in God if you find yourself saying, God, I'm determined. Now, if you say you're determined, you shouldn't dwell on what other people think. Get to a place in God that you say, God, I want to satisfy you. But you ought to care a certain extent what people think of you. Because you can be so high, man, you only can see yourself. Mm -hmm. And now you feel like, wow, well, God, why well, I don't got no help? Why well, I don't have no community? Well, you push everybody away. It's dangerous to live this type of life without God. It's dangerous to die today. And you had every opportunity to get your life in order. Know how to make the adjustment. In the 80s, Michael Jackson said, look in the mirror and make a change. We have a lot of people see everybody else's problems, situations so clear. What about our own? Take the time to process. Take the time to digest and say, God, I need to make a change. It's a sad thing that people have been in church all their life and still in diapers. It's a sad thing that you call them to pray. They can't even pray. Mm. I got to a point now in my life, I said, God, I, I don't even care about the, the title. 
I, I'm not at that, uh, that level to say, oh, I need to be called reverend on all these things. I'm not in that type of lifestyle. God, I want to be a servant. Amen. All right. I want to serve. And I, and I said, God, if you say my time has ended at one place, allow me to lose my emotions and obedience of you. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's hard to keep saying, God, take me further, and you keep looking back. What happened to Locke's wife? She kept looking back, and she turned into what? In a pearl of salt. Sometimes just a, just a little glance can trouble your mind, can trouble your heart. Know how to resist the devil. And the Bible says whoever resists the devil, he will what? Flee. But you got to know how to have the power in you to order to flee. You got to have something in you to order to resist it. You said, God, help me get over this. Help me to prosper this. But you got to have a hunger and say, God, I don't want to be like this anymore. And once you lose interest, that's how you develop freedom. In the spirit of God, we're all standing on today. We all standing and finish. In times like these, you need a savior. The doors of the church open. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor home. special occasion at this moment before we have the announcement. We're going to have a baby dedication at this time. So we're going to ask Sister Keeper to come forward. Oh, let's give a hand praise of what God Come on, let's go. In Scripture, 1 Samuel says, For a child, I pray, the Lord has given 
me my petition which I have asked him. Therefore, I also lent them to the Lord and given his life to him that is the Lord and he that will worship them all the days of their lives. And also a familiar scripture in Proverbs said, train up a child in the way they should go and when they get older shall not depart from it. All of us know these scriptures are going. And so today we come to dedicate this baby and to the Lord because only what God does do for you only the Lord provides for you. Only the Lord supplies for you. So we're going to come and dedicate this baby today. Look, he is so precious. Let's just give him a hand, praise. Right? <laughs> the Jarius. We're going to ask all of the family members of Russell and Keeper to come up for the power and the family of prayer. So any of the family members that want to come up at this time, we're going to ask them to come up as well. We're going to pray together as a church family and as a physical family. We're going to ask them to come up right now at this moment. Precious Lord, take our hand. Lead us, O oh Lord. We thank you this morning, O oh Father God, for the baby Jairus. That you lock your loving arm around him, O oh Father God. That you, who is life, O oh Father God, you order his steps and keep him on from hurt, harm, or danger. Allow him to prosper in life and let him know that trust in the Lord with all of his heart. Lead not to their own understanding, O oh Father God. We know you have great plans, oh, Father God. We know he shall prosper, oh, Father God. We ask, oh, Father God, that you just order the steps, oh, Father God. Allow them to walk by faith and not by sight. We pray for the parents, oh, Father God, and the grandparents and this family, oh, Father God, that they all come together and be a support group for him, oh, Father God, that when he looks around, he'll see that there's nothing but love in the family. There's nothing but family in there. A family that loves and prays together, stays together, oh, Father God. We pray, oh, Father God, that in the years to come, oh, Father God, he will see you as his Savior. Father God, watch over him, oh, Father God. Right now, I ask you to touch the top of his head to the soles of his feet, oh, Father God. Put an angels or a cap around him, oh, Father God, throughout his life, oh, Father God, that he would grow up and be the child of God that you would want him to be, oh, Father God. We thank you in advance of what you're about to do, oh, Father God. We pray, oh, Father God, that you just continue touching this family. Keep them all, oh, Father God. Keep them all, and when trouble comes, let them know what the Scripture said. Trouble don't last always, because Jesus said, I've already overcome it. So, Father God, as they come forth, oh, Father God, continue to bless them, and we'll continue to give you the praise, give you the honor, and give you the glory. Bless them right now in the mighty name of Jesus, and all of God's people said amen. Amen. I can get used to this. No, no ideas, no ideas, no ideas. Just, 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 just for a little while. Just for a little while. Bless you, God. You don't want to let go. Look at it. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. <laughs> Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Bless this family. Continue to bless them. Continue to trust your family. Stay together through trials, ups and downs. Just keep on holding on to God. God is able to do anything but fail. Just keep on holding on. 
God wouldn't brought you to it if he wasn't going to bring you through it. All right? Amen. Just let it know that the church family loves each and every one of you. To keep and Russell, just keep on trusting in the Lord. Keep on keeping your eye on God and what God says, says eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Or has it entered to the hearts of men what God has in store for you? This is just the beginning, and I just believe the best is yet to come. So God bless you, and God keep you, and may heaven continue to shine upon this whole family. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Our announcements for this week are as follows. First, a thank you card. With a thankful heart, thank you for all the prayers, cards, phone calls, flowers, food, and all the love and kindness you have given us. God bless you all, brother and sister Kaya. Galatian Missionary Baptist Church, 2020 Maryland Avenue, New Albany, Indiana. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Pastor's Aid Committee is selling ribs and chicken dinners on Sunday, July, I'm sorry, September 25th, time 1 o'clock until. The cost is rib dinner, $15, chicken dinner, $12. Two sides come with the dinner, and they consist of baked beans, potato salad, green beans, macaroni and cheese. Soft drinks and water are a dollar, and desserts are $2. Thanking you for your cooperation. Culinary meeting immediately after morning service. Missionary meeting after morning service. Uh, they will be having an Oktoberfest this Saturday, October the 1st, from 11 until 6 p.m. They have over 10 vendors. Uh, they will be selling fish, turkey legs. Uh, Mary Kay has a booth, hair necessities, Paula purses and beyond, paparazzi accessories, and many more. So you ask them to come out and please support our missionaries with their endeavor. No choir rehearsal this Saturday due to the church festival. Our birthdays and anniversaries for this week are as follows. On uh, Monday, Ryan Grace, Daylin Hunter, and in loving memory of Deacon James Thomas. On Tuesday, Ella Ray Brown. On Wednesday, Deacon Huey Bell. And on Saturday, Alaya Casey and Yolanda, Yolanda Johnson. Happy birthday to all those I have mentioned. And I'm doing this backwards, but do we have any first-time visitors this morning? If you oh, please stand and have a word. No first-time visitors? Thank you. Let us continue to keep all of the announcements on this weekend. Let us pray for our October fest and please we can't expect someone else to support us if we don't support our own so let's support the vendors that are here at the church they're going to be here beginning at 10 o'clock 10 a.m 10 a.m this Saturday there are going to be vendors there's going to be food there's going to be things that you can purchase so let us support the church and the community this Saturday at 10 o'clock. This Saturday at 10 o'clock. We're going to send out a text and some flyers to get everybody. want everybody to tell somebody to come out and support the church this Saturday. This Saturday. It's all minds are clear. Let us remember that. Let us remember the events that are coming up in the rest of this month, rest of this year. We've had a good year this year, and it's winding down. Time is winding when the last quarter weather's changing, the season's changing, the 
clothes are changing, but the God still stays the same. He's still blessing us the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So let us continue to pray for one another. So this Saturday, 10 o'clock, this Saturday, 10 o'clock, and then, then on next Sunday, next Sunday, there, there, there's a, a tea going on for uh, uh, this fine young lady sitting on the third row. So we're going to uh, support the tea that they have put together. So let's support all the events that are happening at the church as well. Then the month of November, we have our Friends and Family Day. Friends and Family Day. We took a, a year or two off because of COVID, but we're going to see who gets the title this year. You can start start, start putting out your, your, your invitations and inviting your family to see who's going to take home the plaque, the trophy this year. I think, who got it last time? Oh, okay. I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to say nothing. I want to let that go then. Nah, we congratulations to the pals. Their, 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 their victory, their victory. We don't know if it's going to be a repeat victory, but we're going to go ahead and give you congratulations on that one. But let us remember, Friends and Family Day, what a great time to have all of your family and friends to come out and worship with you. So start letting them know now. You know, you got to let family know ahead of time. So we got a whole month to let them know what a time we're going to have for Friends and Family Day. So then also in that, that following Sunday, we are the invited guests in Madison, Indiana for uh, Pastor Harvey Leggett's. Uh, anniversary and then that Wednesday we go over to cable for their uh, Wednesday night wow so we uh, a lot going on so let us just continue to pray for one another and pray together as we continue to support and go up the King's Highway let us all stand for the benediction let us stand for the benediction Father God, for the offering that has been taken up. We, Father God, we thank you for the giver and those who wanted to give, that it offering may be used for the uplifting of thy kingdom, O oh Father God, of all the many blessings that you have stowed upon me. Bless this offering in a mighty way. Now, Lord, we thank you, O oh Father God, for this day, for the word that we have heard, O oh Father God, that we shall humble ourselves, O oh Father God, and realize there are some stuff we just got to understand we can't change, but we got a God who can change all things that does not change. So, be with us, leaders and guiders, oh, Father God, as we depart from this place. We continue our prayer over Minister Gillespie, oh, Father God. Continue to touch him in a mighty way, oh, Father God. We know that he's getting better, oh, Father God. Day by day, continue to bless him in a mighty way. And we'll continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless to the only wise God, both dominion, power, and glory, henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's children sang. <laughs>